Running an Intel Arc GPU without this one crucial feature is like running your car with its engine management light on. It simply isn't ideal. Resizable bar is basically required because without it, Intel's discrete GPUs are kind of useless. So stick around to find out why you need to enable this feature on one of these graphics cards. If you're using an Arc Discrete graphics card, Intel highly recommends that you enable resizable bar. But what does this even do? And essentially, it allows PCIe devices like your Discrete GPU to negotiate bar sizes, theoretically improving performance. Well, at least that's the case with both Nvidia and AMD graphics cards, as they don't need resizable bar to get a playable experience but it will help boost frame rates in some games. But due to how art graphics cards are designed, they basically need this feature, or you're going to be losing a whole heap of performance. And to find out how much performance you could be losing, I've tested my RK750 at both 1080p and 1440p with resizable bar enabled and disabled. All testing has been done in my Ryzen 5 7600 testing PC, which has 32 gigabytes of 6200 MHz CL32 DDR5 memory, a Western Digital SN 770 2 terabyte NVMe SSD, and an MSI X670E Tomahawk. I've used the latest driver at the time of testing, which I'll put down there, I cannot remember the Arc drivers are so long, and I've left my A750 at its stock out of the box settings. So let's see how rough performance is without resizable bar. With resizable bar enabled, the RK750 puts out some decent performance in Cyberpunk 2077 with the high preset enabled. Here you're good enough for just under 80 FPS at 1080p, but where this does kind of fall apart is without resizable bar because 53 FPS with one setting disabled is pretty wild. And that 1% load does take quite a big hit as well. Where you'll see massive hits is 1440p, just under 60 FPS for Quad HD is not too bad with resizable bar enabled, but that goes down to 41 when you disable the PCIe feature, which is not very good at all. The same story continues just to a lesser degree with Spider-Man Remastered. 87 FPS at 1080p is very good performance, but 68 is still somewhat decent, it's just not as much as you could get with resizable bar enabled. When you up this to 1440p, you do start to see a bigger performance hit here. With resizable bar, you can get around 80 FPS on average, but without it, the averages and 1% lows do suffer significantly, so obviously resizable bar kind of needs to be on. Star Wars Jedi Survivor at 1080p sees the same thing again. Losing 28% performance with resizable bar off is pretty substantial. This is like a new tier of graphics card, maybe even closer to two. So yeah, resizable bar is definitely a necessity here. And it even is at 1440p where you'll be losing around 22% performance, which is still quite a lot with the averages. Even with resizable bar disabled, the RK750 still has quite a competitive frame rate, only with the averages though, because the 1% low at 1080p drops by more than 100 frames per second, which is absolutely atrocious. It was an absolute stutter fest, particularly at 1080p. Then again, even at Quad HD, that 1% low isn't great, despite the average being all right in my opinion. Yes, it's losing quite a bit of performance compared to resizable bar being on, but still, that 1% low is the biggest hit in Fortnite. Starfield is a pretty poorly optimized game, but even then, resizable bar does work its wonders, as you can get a playable frame rate with it at 38 FPS at 1080p. That's debatable on how playable that is but what's not up for debate is it's certainly better than 26 frames per second that is the score you're going to be getting without resizable bar and the one percent low is also quite bad here as well switching this up to 1440p sees a yeah still quite a big reduction in both averages and one percent low frame rates where you will go from a relatively playable 32 fps down to 23 which is more like a hollywood blockbuster sort of frame rate and the one percent lows aren't looking great without resizable bar so 
Yeah, Intel weren't lying when they said you've got to enable resizable bar on these graphics cards. Hogwarts Legacy at 1080p sees quite good performance with resizable bar enabled. 70ish FPS on average is quite solid in my opinion. With resizable bar disabled, that does go below 60 FPS. The 1% low here is also looking not that great at just 28 frames per second, so yeah, it's a bit of a stutter fest. Switching this up to 1440p sees a, well, it's sort of the same story, but to a lesser extent than 1080p, I guess. Yes, with resizable bar enabled, the RK750 can't get 60 FPS at Quad HD, but it's looking a lot better than 43 FPS, so yeah, there is that. Also, without the PCIe feature, you're losing about 20 frames on average for the 1% low, which is obviously not great. The frame pacing is going to be all over the place. F123 sees a fairly moderate, well I'll say moderate, it's like almost 30% reduction in the average frame rate when disabling resizable bar at 1080p. The 1% lows also do suffer quite significantly as well. Switching up to 1440p, the same story can be said where the averages and the frame rates are looking pretty decent with resizable bar enabled, but when this is turned off, yeah, the performance is nowhere near as good. Still quite solid though, in a way, but yeah, just to enable resizable bar, it's literally free performance at this point. Running Intel's discrete graphics cards without resizable bar is basically kneecapping them. You're going to be losing a whole chunk of performance and Intel certainly weren't kidding when they say you must enable it to get really good performance on these GPUs because without it, the performance is bad, it's, it's really bad. In the games I've tested today, Without resizable bar, the A750 lost 26% performance with the average frame rates. This is a whole tier of graphics card and maybe even more at that. And that is a whole heap of performance to be left on the table through one crucial setting. So could you say it's free performance if you enable resizable bar on this? Probably not as you should enable it and it's more like you're losing performance because you don't have resizable bar enabled. But this trend continues at 1440p with the games tested today losing around 25% performance on average with the average frame rate. It means no matter the resolution, you're going to be losing a whole heap of performance on one of these graphics cards if you leave this PCIe setting off. And it's not just the average frame rate, however. The 1% lows, particularly in games like Fortnite, took a massive hit. Here, it went from a very playable experience at both 1080p and 1440p in Fortnite, and disabling resizable bar took it to an absolutely stuttery mess, which I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy because the performance was absolutely, well, woeful. The averages were all right, but the 1% lows, they, they were far from all right. And games like Cyberpunk, Spider-Man, and Hogwarts Legacy, they were very playable, particularly at 1080p and somewhat so at 1440p with resizable bar enabled. And then when you disable that, it just turns it into a much worse, less pleasant and just a terrible gaming experience in general. As I've said, the 1% lows did suffer quite heavily and this trend continues to the AAA games as well. Even in the case of Starfield, that was playable somewhat at both 1080p and 1440p if you consider around like 30 FPS playable. But when the PCIe feature is turned off, pff, the performance is definitely not good. So I can very confidently say if your PC does not support resizable bar, do not even consider an ARC graphics card. As we've seen, the performance loss today is absolutely, well, it's atrocious. There's no other word for it. So keep it to Team Red or Team Green with NVIDIA and AMD as you'll have a much better gaming experience as these don't need resizable bar to have a playable gaming experience. Yes, resizable bar does unlock performance on both NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards, but it's nowhere near to the extent of Team Blue. Conversely, if your PC does support resizable bar, the RK750 and the A770 are absolutely valid choices, with this one being one of the best budget graphics cards you can buy for new and used in 2024. So if you want to see how this stacks up to the AMD competition, I've got a video up there for you. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.